Hey guys, it's Alicia. Today I am making a birthday cake for my son and he wants a tails cake. So that's what I'm gonna attempt to do here. Now I made him a Sonic the Hedgehog cake last year and it turned out pretty well. And so I'm gonna kind of do sort of the same thing this year to make his tails cake. And um, hopefully it turns out this year. But anyway, I thought I would show you what I'm starting with here and that is three vanilla cakes. And what I'm using for the recipe on this is my favorite vanilla cake recipe. I use this for everything. It tastes so good. It's pretty easy to make and it works really well when you're doing cakes where you need to like cut pieces out of it. It's a fairly dense cake, so it works really well when you are using it for something like I'm gonna be using it today to be cutting pieces out of it to form my overall shape. So don't wanna be using a super fluffy cake for something like that, so I'm using this one. And like I said, this cake is just, it's delicious. I love it. I use it for everything anyway. So gonna be using that again, but this time instead of just making the recipe that I normally do, which is two cakes, I went ahead and one and a half times, for lack of better words, uh, the recipe so that I'm getting three cakes because I'm thinking that I'm gonna need more than just the two cakes to do Tails, ears, and his face. So I just didn't wanna have not enough cake. And I might end up not needing the extra cake, but I figured who doesn't want extra cake anyway? So, <laughs> so like I said, I just went ahead and one and a half times the recipe um, so I could get three cakes. And I will link that recipe down below so you can see what I used for that if you wanna use it. You don't have to use it, you can use whatever you want. But yeah, definitely recommend this one for a vanilla cake. So that is what I'm starting with, is the three round cakes here. This one here, which is gonna be my face, I've just got on a cookie sheet that I covered in aluminum foil because I do not have any type of cake tray or anything that's gonna be big enough to hold this other than my biggest cookie sheet. So that's what I'm going to uh, put it on. And I'm assuming it's gonna be big enough, but yeah. So let me get started and I will show you how I'm gonna do this. Also, this guy right here, as you can see, is darker than these two. I cooked them in the same oven at the same time, but this one was further to the back and it was also in a darker pan. So I think it got cooked a little bit more because of that, but uh, it's still not overdone or anything. It's just a little bit darker. So I thought I would mention that because I do kind of look weird as I'm looking through the camera at them. Okay, so first thing first is I've got my two extra cakes here and I've got this kind of rough, very rough sketch on parchment paper of tails of kind of what I want him to look look like. I just looked up an image of him on the internet and that's what I'm going by. And so I drew out his ears up here and also his little cheek fur. I'm gonna cut both of these out to use as kind of a template. And then I'm gonna just lay these on the cake and I'm gonna cut around them. So I cut that out and then I ended up moving it over so that I would have that nice clean edge piece to work with. And now here I'm just laying these on the top of the first cake. And there's his little ears. Now I'm just cutting out his cheek fur, for lack of a better word. And this is where having kind of a more dense cake comes in handy because when you're cutting cake like that, you don't want it to fall apart. And it did a little bit, but it did also hold up fairly well. So I'm just placing those and cutting out the other one. And I did end up with a lot of extra cake, but like I said in the beginning, that's totally fine because who doesn't want more cake? So I've got those placed and now I'm gonna take some Wilton store-bought icing. I've got a number three tip on there and I'm gonna just start drawing in his face, his nose, his mouth, and eyes. And this is just plain black. I don't like tinting 
black frosting. It never works out really well for me, so I always just buy it. And now I'm gonna do his ears. And then his hair. And now here I'm just kind of going back and adding a little more to certain spots and also filling in his eyes. And then I took a damp finger and I kind of patted down his nose and his eyes to smooth that out. And now I'm just going back over again with the black to just make it a little bit darker so it stands out or still shows when I add the other frosting to it. And I just added a little black to his mouth there and patted that down too. Here I've got some pink tinted frosting and I've just got it in a Ziploc bag with a Wilton number 16 tip on it. And the reason I have it in a Ziploc bag, and there's blue that I also have in the Ziploc bag for his eyes, is because I ran out of piping bags. And a Ziploc bag works great if you do not have actual piping bags. Now I'm using my white frosting or the frosting that I didn't tint. And again, I'm using the Wilton number 16 tip for this. And I use the Wilton number 16 tip for the whole rest of this cake. The only part I used the number three for was the black frosting. So I'm just taking my white and I'm filling in his ears and then I'm gonna fill in his face and his eyes and his cheek fur. And the frosting that I'm using for this is actually the Wilton recipe for their frosting. And it works really, really well. And it also tastes really good. So that's pretty much what I always use when I do these types of cakes. And the recipe for the Wilton frosting is in the vanilla cake video that I'm gonna be linking down below. So if you wanna check out that frosting, I highly recommend it for these types of cakes. Here I'm just taking some of my leftover colored frosting that I don't need anymore and I'm filling in those cracks to just kind of make the piping frosting go on a little bit smoother. I did want to also point out that I ended up using more frosting than just what the one batch made. I was just a little bit short and so you might not end up having to make more but I did and I had that extra cake anyway so I just made up the extra frosting. Here I am piping in kind of a yellowy orange color for his face and his ears. Now that I've got the whole front of the cake frosted, I am moving on to the sides. And I always have kind of a difficult time piping the sides. And so I just ended up taking a knife and just frosting it regular there because I got tired of the piping kind of falling off and just giving me a hassle. So I kind of did that with most of the sides of this cake. And here is what he looks like when he is all done. I think he turned out pretty cute. Not perfect by any stretch, but cute. And as I said about the Sonic cake, my main goal here was just for my son to like him. And my son definitely did really, really like this cake. In fact, he told me he liked this one better than the Sonic one. So I definitely considered that a win. All in all, this was a pretty easy cake to do too. The hardest thing is just the frosting of it. It takes a really, really long time to pipe all that frosting on there. And I am not gonna lie, I had some serious hand cramps when I got done frosting this thing. I actually had to take a break in between the white and the yellow because my hand was just cramping up really, really bad. But other than that, no real problems with this cake. But that is it guys, that is my tails cake. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I will see you on the next one.